Hello and a warm welcome back. Yes, today on the bench is the bloody big green amp again. If you're sick of seeing the damn thing, I sure as am of sticking it on this freaking bench. So the other day I was listening to it. it sounded all right in some places, but I noticed it was very sort of it was distorting on the bass, you know, at low frequencies. So sorted the other amp out, thought I'd bung this one on the bench and these are the results so on the scope you see a waveform which the audio analyzer is telling me is one kilohertz which is very strange because like the volume control is turned to zero and it gets even weirder on the other channel which has no input whatsoever but is hooting away or self-oscillating at 40 kilohertz uh, so yes I, I haven't a frigging clue what is going off there because as far as I know this amplifier hasn't any negative feedback applied and the last time I put it on the bench and was testing it Oh yeah feck, just got burnt. Seems to be a day of burns. The last time I tested it, it was fine. So this week seems to have a theme. I don't know if you noticed this in life. You go through life and then sort of some days it's like all the traffic lights are at red. Or other days you get idiots in cars pulling out and you every five minutes or just idiots, you know, and they seem to go in threes so this week seems to be amplifiers just doing totally weird shit and self oscillating i will endeavor to get to the bottom of the problem so what was going off um i did briefly mess about with the 6b6 ga's in and i found that the the situation improved if I drove them more into class A. Essentially I don't think they were suited to the primary impedance of the output transformer as much as these 588 ones are. The 588 ones as configured ultralinear need about 4k primary impedance and that's exactly what I've got. That's what the output impedance is. And obviously the ultralinear helps a bit as well um to lower distortion because it's halfway between a pentode beam tetrode and triode um so yeah so we get better distortion and to be honest it seemed a bit daft having ultralinear taps on an output transformer and not using the buggers doesn't it so so far tests better uh one other thing i did uh, which i haven't mentioned is I replaced the valve base on that 12BH7 so I've kept the 12BH7 driver as before that was um, run from a constant current source it's long tail pair with a constant current source and I also changed the front end the V1 the uh, voltage gain amp from a 6CL6 to a 6AU6 which is a 7 pin rather than a 9 pin um, I've got some new old stock ones they're like a uh, military version which I don't really think matters and I'm running those in a triode mode and what's the gain I'm getting at? I'm getting 29 I'm getting about a gain of 30 29, 30 uh, the data sheet said for triode strapped I can get a gain of a lot higher than that so I might not have them configured exactly right for a high gain but I'm not quite sure about that it doesn't give you a lot of information on the data sheet a quick sort of test let's see how much watts it can do and how it behaves at a little bit higher power obviously this was a hell of a lot of work 
took me about two days to reconfigure it and change the valve bases. Yeah, uh, days that I haven't got at the moment, but I, I never was happy with this amp. Right, let's up the amplitude. So where are we? We are 1.5 volts out at the moment. Amplitude 0.5V. Oh fuck. Amplitude 0.2V. Right, that's 13 volts out and we're getting some what's it. Amplitude 0.1V. Right, that's a bit better. Okie doke. So that is... Eight volts RMS out. Yeah, distortion's obviously gone up, but I'm pretty certain I haven't got them bias exactly right. I had to ditch this board that was in there, which was the uh, bias negative bias uh, power supply, as it were, and the regulated screen grid supply which means we've got a bit more, where do you call it, a bit more room in there. This is just a lashed together by supply at the moment. Uh, yeah, there's still quite a few things lashed, you know, wires all over the place and everything, but that won't take me long to just, you know, tidy that up and sort it out. Anyway, I shall crack on and shut up waffling. So as mentioned, I've swapped the 6BG6 doodars for 5881s however we have a problem Houston see these two resistors here that's just like a reference a ground reference for the heater supply and what's been happening is if I connect that to ground into that center tap of two 220 ohm resistors as you can see they're a bit burnt and that was the last two they just totally fried why what the fuck is going off so now i point you if you can hopefully see meter set on dc volts touching the heater should only well should get nothing we're getting 400 volts on the heater. Z. On the other one, on the other side, zero. That's what it should be, zero. So we have a heater, I guess, anode short. Let's have a look at the valve. Because the last time, when I tested these valves, they tested all right. However, I didn't test them. Haha, uh -huh. didn't test them for heater electrode shorts. So look at valve. Hopefully you will see there we've got some carbonization between pins two and three. Turn that in the light. See there? Like a short has happened. That is looking like an external short, but it isn't. If I get my meter and where are we that's the that's the anode it's the heater okay we'll get no reading on the direct continuity put that there I'm reading 106k we do the same to the other one three I'm getting nothing, I'm getting open circuit. So, the valve is fucked. Well, I've scraped away the carbonization between pins two and three, and I've come to a hypothesis, whether it's right or not, I don't know. Could it be that a bit of solder or a bit of wire or something, got in between those two pins when it was plugged in I, I don't see how that can be but it's possible 
that caused, caused an arc, carbonisation to build up and thus we got a short. I've been, like, as I say, scooped, scooped it all out and now get a reading of open circuit. So I'm going to pop it back in, test it again and see what the crack is. The amp's powered up, bell's back in. I'm now getting the reading on the heaters of about 20 volts, 20, 21 volts. So I'm going to dig more of that carbon out and make sure it's all out and then probably fill it with epoxy or something like that and then retest. I epoxied the valve, left it in front of the fire, well, you know, in a warm place overnight after scraping out all the carbon. I'm trying not to get in the way of the shot. Yep. Just trying to get in there. Right, and as you can see, the voltage on the heater there is much reduced to 0 0.7. However, the fun and games sort of continue. Okay. And this one channel is playing silly buggers. So, to try and explain what's going off. I've got my scope probe on the cathode of one output valve. I, I didn't intend, intend on filming so the setup's a bit all over the shop. You might hear this as well so I've got this is coming from my signal generator it's you know just like a thing where I can stick a signal in because it's not hooked up to the front end here get you down there this is the grid down here and it's been basically what's been happening it's been oscillating so to try and stop that I've put a 1k grid stopper in so if I do that you can hear that I don't want to do this for too long as you can see we've got really high parasitic oscillation and I can stop that, I'll show you how, I'll try not to do this for too long because it's not doing the amplifier any good. Right, watch. Right, I'll just take that off. What's happening there then? See this? Uh, let me just try and pull back. Get this. Try and film it properly, Andrew. See this yellow wire? That's just going to the ground there. That these, that those two sort of big decoupling caps were sort of. You know, that's their ground. That then goes to the main signal ground, the, the main ground of the amplifier. However, for some reason, while well, doing a few changes and things the amplifier chassis isn't grounded so if I point you at my meter there I've got one lead going to ground the main signal ground of the amplifier and then the other lead is just sort of you know wherever I want to put it so it's on continuity and it should go beep if the chassis is grounded no beep. If I now use that screwdriver with the lead on it, and that, just the chassis being grounded, is enough to stop the parasitic oscillation. Weird, eh? And the other thing is, I'll point you down here. See how it's just sort of all just tacked in, some of it a bit like, you know, tacked in temporarily because I'm still 
messing about the other valve is ex oh, I'll try and move that out of the way the other valve is exactly the same but it doesn't do it so sometimes your best uh, sort of fault finding technique is to get and pull you back is to get a flying lead one end to ground screwdriver or whatever you know on one end so you can sort of put it in various things have a poke about with that and see if that changed anything obviously you don't want to touch it straight to HT so you know we're talking signal inputs and things like that or just ground so we're talking zero volts zero potential you know anyway Hope you found that interesting. Take care of yourselves. Ta-da for now.